Holy moly, did I make some purchases? I'll keep the games for last. So, I went to a local thrift store here in Antwerp and they had some good vinyl. Most of it was singles from 12 inch singles from the 80s. I generally tend not to pick those up, even if they had very cool stuff like Kylie Minogue. General Kane in full chill. It's like a 80s Motown hip hop album. Uh, I actually don't know if it's any good, probably not. Uh, but I listened to one song on YouTube because on Apple Music there was nothing and it sounded all right, you know, like typical lady shit, which I like. This one's a weird one. I never heard of this guy before, uh, Herb Alpert, but I listened to it on Apple Music and boy, oh boy, if you like 80s sounds, this is some 80s sounds. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually don't know anything, any any of the... Well, I know Earth, Wind & Fire, of course. LL Cool J, I know. I actually do know some persons on this record, but this was like a promotional album from L'Oreal Studio Line, which was really funky and hip in the 80s. These were all two euros a piece. And it starts with a st st Studio Line tune, like the commercial from back in the day. So this is pretty nostalgic for me. I don't know if anybody knows any el anybody else on the track list here. And then I also had to go to Brussels for work, stopped at Pele Mele, picked up a Peter Schilling album. It was two euros. So I said, yeah, I can really complain for two euros. But then I looked at the games. I'll show you the clips now. And now we're back. Oh man, couldn't resist this one. Run Saber. I've been eyeing this game for so long. It's not the cheapest price, but it is the full English version, which is mostly you find uh, the like French or Italian or American, of course. I would have preferred American because it's actually it's cheaper than the European version. But to see it in real life. Now all my I need to start selling stuff again because all my money is uh, all my selling money is gone. And I was at the register paying for this uh, game. <laughs> Suddenly it was, the guy was uh, unpacking uh, Final Fantasy 3. And I said, uh, are you selling that? Yeah, sure, just checking if everything is in there. And he was like 150 because the condition is not that great. The map is a bit torn, but it is in there. And I said, I just bought this one. I said, 140 for you. So I decided to pay cash. And lo and behold, I only had 135. So the guy said, okay, 135 is good. <laughs> I said, I wanted to do five by card, but he didn't want to. So pretty cool, no? Two, uh, whoa, awesome games. So yeah, happy puppy. Now let's get back to work. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Another week has passed. Not so great today, the three thrift stores. One flew over the cuckoo's nest on Blu-ray. Uh, two euros, I believe they were charging one euro last time. Today was two euros. And some vinyl. That's it, basically. War of the Worlds. I wanted to listen to this. I mean, it influenced a lot of people. There even was a game based on this this is something really weird i couldn't find it on apple music but i could find it on youtube like some really funky m music no idea what it is i need to look it up but it sounded good so that's why i bought it and this is a childhood show i hadn't thought about this stuff in like forever and i saw the face of a league beast which means Lying Beast. I remember it being a really strange show. It's a uh, it's Belgian made, so I don't think it ever was uh, abroad somewhere in another country. But it's super duper weird. It is a flying castle on the on a piece of uh, rock that flies through the air, and they have all these adventures. And the king, like this dude, is like also super weird. I remember this as a kid. 
So yeah, probably never listened to it, but it's just like a nostalgic memory flashback. Bye. Die weet dat ik hier ben, hoewel ik de kasteelheer ben. Ik ben geen mens, maar ook geen echt beest. Ik ben het superlieve beest. Hello fellas, let's finish this week in pickups. So yesterday and also today was um, Vintage Toys of the Universe. I really didn't have a lot of time to go, but I went on the just before it closed together with my son. Did find some stuff, not a whole lot. Didn't really feel like picking up too many things because I already purchased these two babies earlier this week um, I did however sell my Apple tree computer which netted me another 400 euros which I will use to further enlarge my collection of course I did find uh, a couple of cool things at Vintage Toys of the Universe first of all some troll warriors and I mainly picked this up because they had weapons it also came with one extra weapon and I actually have the figure for this one. The same seller had a Dr. Kilamov. I got one from my friend K-Man, but yeah, the face is painted black, so this one looks more cleaner. It was 20 in total. 10 for the Troll Warriors and 10 for this. The other toy I picked up, picked up at the con itself is for another 10, this Modulok. He isn't complete. But he's complete enough like to stand him like this, so I was happy with it, you know. You don't see him a lot, he's an expen more expensive figure. Then he's kept my kind of price. This other fellow was selling some uh, badges. So these are some TMNT badges. I will attach these to the battle jacket, of course. And also an elf patch. Patch, not batch. So this was one, one, and three, so five in total. Pretty sweet. Next up, I went to check out my buddy's Julian's boot, and he had one game, uh, F Zero GX, which I we bought this together in like five years ago at Comic Con, and I was kind of jelly at the time. So now he was flogging it off. So I said, hey, I. I should have this game, so I got it for the same price that he paid back in the day. He also found me a Star Wars DVD for 50 cents. A DVD, Blu-ray. This is sealed, by the way. I kind of like The Force Awakens. Uh, I didn't like the ending. Another Dead Star. Another The First Order is also super weird. What's up with that, you know? Ah, that was really not necessary, but I like the beginning with Ray, and then uh, meeting Han Solo and so on. So yeah, best of the modern movies in my book. This is also a, a Julian find, uh, Skeleton Warriors issue 4. I do believe I have one, two, and maybe three, I don't know, I have a couple of these. So excellent to have one more. And this summer uh, I found one pop figure, my first pop figure, an Eveline from Motu. Julian found at around the same time, we had, he had them for quite a while, um, some more uh, pops, Horde Trooper, uh, Dragster, and Blast Attack. Uh, this is kind of sad, it's like 2020 Summer Convention Limited Edition, uh, probably from the USA, and I just found this in like a uh, Belgian... Um, Euro shop like Kruidvat, which is a chain that sells like uh, uh, outlets toys. I guess you always find like the the things that weren't popular there for cheap. 
Uh, these were, I believe, six euros a piece. I will unpack them, not leave them in the boxes. Uh, what else did we get? Oh yeah, get a online purchases. Uh, these two are limited run games. Uh, Vengeful Guardian Moonrider, which is uh, by the same company who do, did Bla Chrome, Blazing Chrome, which was an excellent like contract loan. So yeah, looking forward to actually playing this one. And another one, Jeff Minter is, well, Tempest 2000 is one of my all time favorite games. And he made this game for Atari, uh, Aka Arc. Arc. I, I tried it, but it's. I need read to I need to read the manual because I didn't understand jack shit. Pretty cool card from Limited Run there. I don't buy a lot of Limited Run games, but if if there's a game like this where I have a personal attachment to, like Jeff Minter for example, then I'll pick it up. This one was uh, too good to be true to pass on, I guess. I paid um, 90 euros for this one, I believe. Um, Dangerous Seat, uh, Mega Drive shoot 'em up from back in the day. It came nicely in a, in a box protector. And this is the game. I did swap out, swap out the case with another case because it was scuffed. But now it is a minty fresh game. Love it. Did already have the game on a bootleg card, so I played it a lot back in the day. It's a it's an okay shooter. And then already a month ago, so <laughs> these have been lying here for quite a while. I needed to pick up a, a birthday present for my nephew. And yeah, I went to the toy store, checked the game section. And they had some good things on sale. Lost Judgment. Kind of hoping to play this one. I never played the Yakuza game, shame on me. But I'm not really into 3D stuff. Um, G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. I played this one already a bit. <clears throat> it's kind of boring, to be honest. And also, it didn't come with a game card, but it's a download code. So, meh, didn't see that in the store. This one I'm looking forward to play a live a life or live a live. I don't know <laughs> how you say that. Um, yeah, it's a classic Super Famicom RPG that has been remade for the Switch. So yeah, looking forward to checking it out. What else? What else did we get? Oh yeah. So we're cleaning up at work. And I've been working here for six years. I know the IT room by heart, of course. And my colleague, well, we're just like filling up carts with old laptops and old uh, computers. And he said, hey, I found an iPad. And I said, huh, I've been working here for six years. Never saw an iPad lying around. So it, it was on the bottom of the broken cell phone uh, pile. But it actually, it works perfectly. It's an iPad 3. Uh, I believe and back when I had an iPhone 5 I downloaded all the um, all the um, cave shmups so I thought it would be nice to play them again because I can't play them on my modern iPhone because they're no longer updated so yeah it's actually looking pretty crappy on, on this iPad but hey at least I try but Actually, for being a 11-year-old uh, iPad, the battery still holds really well. And it has been shut down for like six years, so pretty sweet. It is slow as hell, and I need to like jailbreak it, because you can't really install software on it anymore. All the apps say, no, you're not allowed to do that. Or, or if you try to open something in the browser, it also say, no, 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 that's not allowed. So, another issue, we have a mouse in the house. Uh, my wife and I have been cleaning <clears throat> and turning up upside down each and every corner of our house, but we can't find any like droppings or chewed up on items. 
only one trash bag in the basement had like uh, bite holes in it. So we gathered the mouse is stuck in the basement and my wife said, well, you need to clean up this basement. So I started doing it and filled up my whole car. There was actually a lot of trash that could go to the dump. So I did that yesterday morning and every time I go to the gut dump, I need to check out the electronic bins and most of the time like 70-80% of the time you don't find anything. Uh, I once found Aroton C5 speakers there which I sold for 500 euros online so after a couple of years of using them they're like really rare studio speakers. So you always need to check it because I, my PS3, for example, uh, that I my current PS3 is just one I found at the dump. It was on top of the bins and I took it and it works and the controller, everything works perfectly. Only the hard, hard drive had crashed, of course. Um, and yesterday I saw something that piqued my interests and that's a Toshiba laptop from mid 90s. It's a satellite one moment satellite 200 cds laptop uh, you know i always like the vintage laptops and this one only has a floppy drive normally you can swap it out for a um, cd-rom drive but that wasn't included the cool thing is it just look, look uses a normal kettle lead so the psu psu is built in um, this is excellent for DOS gaming or um, w early Windows gaming. Um, sadly, the screen is like, a, it's not a regular LCD screen, it's earlier technology and it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really bad quality. It also makes a loud hissing noise, the screen. So I need to check out how to fix that. And um, yeah, it also has a BIOS password that I, need to find a way to remove so it works but not yet completely I need to still fix some things about it but still up uh, visually this thing is in a pretty good condition the only s uh, yeah it, it actually looks perfect so you can hook it up to an external screen probably gonna do that if I game on it it came with like a note and the person's passwords, but it's the Windows passwords and not uh, the BIOS passwords. Damn. So yeah, pretty cool find for free at the bins. And then let me look around here. Yeah, one last pickup. This is also already from a couple of weeks ago. At uh, the Comtich op Nieuwenko, I found four awesome French comic books. These are by no means super expensive or anything, but they are just full, full of wonderful arts. I mean, check this out. That's amazing. I believe these are from the 70s. But I don't know if these are like reprints or these are the original. Frankly, I don't care. I just want to look at them and read them. Yeah, it's, these are quite amazing. Check out this one. Especially by uh, Philippe Drouillet. These are not a lot of text actually in them. Which is basically alright, because my French isn't too great. Wow, oh, but look at these art pieces. So yeah, these were like 250 a piece, so 4, 10 euros. So yeah, that's it. A lot of stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed. Talk to you later. Let me find a button to turn this off.